It's been a while, but Cut Off Your Hands are back. They've got a second album, which is due for release in a couple of weeks. And I have two members with me. That is Brent, the drummer, and Nick, the singer. How are you guys? Good, thank you. Good, thanks. Oh, and all is said and done, I must admit now, I know you guys were touring for ages around the States. Can you tell me the most significant thing that you've learnt from touring for so long? Um, I think, well, probably for me, I think... Um, Maybe just to try have fun in all situations and not not take things too seriously. Were yeah. there a few disaster stories on, along the way? You mean? Or? Uh, no, not really. Just enjoy it, eh? Just yeah. yeah I think that's what it means. But yeah, I think it, yeah. I mean, you kind of like you can spend your time worrying about the point of what you're doing and stuff, but then I don't know, like taking a look back on it. So, yeah. Now let's talk about, of course, uh, album number two is about to be released. How do you feel after finishing this album, looking back on your debut? What are your thoughts? Well, it's quite a progression from the first record. The first album was made under completely different circumstances. We had um, a lot of pressure from um, the label in the UK that we were with. We were living there and um, we were sort of under pressure from our expectations of and sort of the press that had surrounded our sort of hype or whatever. Um, whereas with this one, it was much more self-driven, and just we did it because we wanted to. We weren't really expected. Um, we didn't feel there was any expectations from anyone outside the band, and and so the result was um, a much more enjoyable experience. Um, now I know with the last album, you had amazing Bernard Butler with, um, helping you out, and you were over in the UK. This time round, you chose to do it all yourself. What's the story behind that? Um, I think well, part of it is just for the fun of it, like um, there's something quite cool about just doing everything on your own steam. And then obviously like money factors and other things, like so it's nice to be able to make an album like cheaply and not have to kind of like fret over like, you know, expectations of like payback or anything like that, so. Pretty much the main thing, yeah. You can say all these cool, <laughs> cool like ideas, but it's just basically the main thing is the money. Now tell me Brent, I know that you've had problems with your hearing, what's, yeah. what's the story and do you think it's going to affect anything with, with the band? Um, well, yeah, I, mean, I started, I kind of started losing my hearing about eight, eight or so years ago and, um, and kind of midway through the, the band, like in about 2008, 9, I, I, um, I was starting to worry whether or not drumming or just playing like, being in loud bars all the time and stuff was affecting it, so, um, but it kind of turns out that it's not really, it's something kind of outside of my control and that sort of um, circumstances, so, yeah, I mean, it's something got to live with and it will, it will eventually affect, like, how much music I can play and stuff, but in the meantime, I'm just enjoying what I've got. Yeah. And just going in rocking hard? Yeah, pretty much. Nice. <laughs> Good stuff. So, you've done a couple of shows. Do you think there'll be more shows around the yeah. release of the album? Definitely. Cool. What's yeah. the story? Um, we're still like plotting that now, but it's going to be more like August, September. Um, we're doing Splendour in the Grass, which is an Australian festival. Yeah, wow. Um, which is the end of July, and a couple of side shows with uh, Bank of Friendly Fires <laughs> in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, so that kind of means that we can't tour in Australia till September um, because of, you know it's contractual things. But um, we would we would hope to sort of base get get our tours kind of going around the same time. So maybe sort of like late August, September, we'll sort of do New Zealand run and get to the South Island and play all the places that we didn't get to on this tour as well as Auckland and Wellington again. Let's talk about the latest single that you've just shot a video for called Falling No One. Who wrote it? What's it about? Tell me. Um, well, I, I wrote the lyrics and stuff, um, and it's it's about um, I don't know. It's about the time spent away, and and um, it's sort of making it's it's half just making it fun of myself as well, and, and how I can be so mopey and, and <laughs> what you know just worrying all the time and just it's just stupid. Um, but also, yeah, I don't know. Like it, I think it's quite cool. The video is a little bit nonsensical, and it just sort of. It doesn't really relate to the lyrics in that way, but it relates in the sense that it's all sort of um, realising it's a little bit silly. <laughs> cool. All right, before we check it out, let's do one last plug for the album. It's called Hollow, and when's it due out, guys? 18th of July. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. In stores, 18th of July. You heard it here. It's Hollow. Cut up your hands, and let's go check out the latest single. It's called Falling No One. I'm Juice.